How's it going, guys? Difficult question. Cardiopulmonary step one, internal family, TCK. 56-year-old woman walks to the door, bent over at the waist, long-standing history of symmetric metacarpal knee pain. She's got rheumatoid arthritis. This word symmetric, very buzzy for RA, whereas OA, in contrast, is going to be asymmetric. Current medication is diclofenic. It's a potent NSAID. She's on esomeprazole proton pump inhibitor to protect her stomach from the NSAID. She's on methotrexate, first-line DMARD for rheumatoid arthritis. When we're managing RA, you got two arms of management. You've got the symptomatic arm, NSAIDs followed by steroids, and then but they don't halt disease progression. And then you've got the DMARD arm, which does halt disease progression. And methotrexate is usually the drug that is first choice. Prednisone taken orally. Chest x-ray shows bilateral reticular nodular patterning. I don't expect you to look at this chest x-ray and even know what you're seeing here. Okay, so, but reticular nodular is very buzzy almost always just for honeycombing pulmonary fibrosis. You get a big paragraph, you're not sure what's going on. They say chest x-ray or CT shows reticular nodular, reticular pattern, and it's an adult. That's going to be honeycombing. That's pulmonary fibrosis, okay? So rheumatoid arthritis can cause pulmonary fibrosis on its own. It's called rheumatoid lung. In addition, methotrexate can cause pulmonary fibrosis. So these patients likely have a combination of the two leading to their restrictive lung disease. What's going to be a component of this patient's history? Let's hop through. Choice A, decrease left ventricular ejection fraction, wrong fucking answer. There's no reason to assume that in this patient. Some of you who are hyper pedantic, okay, you start overthinking things. You say, well, can rheumatoid arthritis increase acceleration of atherosclerosis leading to myocardial infarction, which in turn would uh, decrease left ventricular ejection fraction? It's not wrong. It's just overthinking, and there's a better answer here, okay? It's about choosing the best answer on the US simile. That's what they want from you. And if we want to get uh, ultra pedantic right now, if choice A is right, then choice C has to be right. Okay, choice A, and I'll talk about that in a second. Choice A, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased mitral orifice cross-sectional area, wrong fucking answer. Obviously it refers to mitral stenosis, which would mean history of rheumatic heart disease. 99% of mitral stenoses are due to history of rheumatic fever. Okay, so acutely as a kid, a uh, kid's going to get strep pyogenes, pharyngitis, mitral regurge acutely, but then five to 10 years later, the valve scars over, leads to mitral stenosis. So it's going to be a rumbling diastolic murmur. They may or may not mention the opening snap. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, which by the way, if B were correct, then C would also likewise have to be correct. C, wrong fucking answer. So pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is increased if your left atrial pressure is increased. You don't have left heart dysfunction in this patient slash in rheumatoid arthritis classically. If we gave you an overt myocardial infarction, it's fine, okay? But it's not what we have here. Now, this patient could have a normal pulmonary capillary wedge pressure with core pulmonal. Core pulmonal means you have right heart failure due to a pulmonary cause. So we've got rheumatoid lung with pulmonary fibrosis or methotrexate. That could lead to pulmonary hypertension and right heart changes with JVD, ultimately, peripheral edema. So we get core pulmonal, but our pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is normal. One of the highest yield points for USMLE. Choice C, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, reduced FEV1 over FEC, wrong fucking answer. It refers to obstructive pathologies. This is restrictive lung disease. Okay, pulmonary fibrosis. So you would have a normal or increased FEV1 over FEC. So that's past level stuff. COPD in contrast, advanced asthma. So obstructive conditions, you'd have a reduced FEV1 over FEC. Choice D, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, ST elevations on ECG, correct answer, no. Some of you think this is highly obscure, and I agree with you that it's a uh, it's arcane to arrive at this answer choice. But sometimes you're going to eliminate to get there, which is what we've done here. And a very high yield point. I said it's a difficult question. A high yield point for you, a simile, 
is that autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, can cause pericarditis. Now, I didn't completely obfuscate it. This patient walked in, bent over at the waist. Holy shit. This is one of the ways that USMLE will give you a vignette of a patient with pericarditis because isn't the pain worse when you lean back, better when you lean forward? Okay, so you're going to get diffuse ST segment elevations on ECG with pericarditis. Some students get pulled into this PR depression nonsense. US simply doesn't give a fuck about that. If you're asked or tested on pericarditis, you got to know it's diffuse ST segment elevations. In contrast, myocardial infarction is three to four ST segment elevations and contiguous leads. The pericarditis, they're in all the leads. Pericarditis, correct answer. You know the deal once you make more content, if you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.